Okay, this is uh, section one, two, day three. You're going to find that today is um, word problem day. Word, everybody's favorite, word problem day. Um, I will say this to you. The OST test that you will take, the Ohio State test for Article 1, is heavy on word problems. Why? That's just the way it is. Why? Because you, you truly have to understand all, like, everything that's going on within the problem, everything that's being asked. That you can, so that you can you know, respond back correctly. So we're going to be spending a lot of time on word problems, or, and, and not just in this section, but in all sections. We're usually going to spend a day just on word problems alone. All right. So the first one that we have here is about Maggie. Maggie earns $9.40 an hour working at the restaurant Table 6. Silver Bell and Village, Table 6. Uh, if her weekly paycheck is $211.06, how many hours did she work that week? So remember that the process here is figure out what we know and what we don't know. Figure out what, what is being asked of us. And then try to figure out some sort of way to solve the problem, whether that's Drawing a diagram, creating an equation, solving it reasonably, solving it logically, whatever it may be, finding some way to solve the problem, and then checking it and make sure it's reasonable by putting it back in the context. All right. Maggie earns $9.40 an hour working at the restaurant Table 6. Her weekly paycheck is $211.50. How many hours did she work that week? What's being asked of us? What do we not know? What are we what are we looking to find here in this problem? How much Maggie worked? For how many hours? How many hours she worked? So let's say H is the number of hours that she worked that week. You could say X, you could be boring if you want. You say X, that's totally fine. Okay, so how do I now I've I've defined what we don't know. I do know how much she makes for the whole week. And I do know her hourly wage. So how do we create an equation? Um, I put 211.50 over 9.40. Ooh, make an equation first. That's You're solving it correctly. But I want an equation for Solomon. Uh, 940H equals 211.50. Good. That's what I will say. Now, are you going to get the answer wrong? No. That, that's completely fine what you're doing. But I, I want to try to set up an equation. 9.40H is equal to 211.50. Because in essence, how do we solve this equation? Well, we divide over the 9.4, which is, which is exactly what you were saying. So we divide over the 9.4, and let's see what we get. H is equal to 211.5 divided by 9.4, and that's 22.5. That's right, 22.5. 211.5 divided by 9.4. 22.5. Okay, so put it back into context. Put it back into context. What does that mean? Solve the problem, not just solve the problem, state what the answer means. What does that mean? What does that mean? She worked 22 and a half hours. Good. She worked 22 and a half hours. Yeah, write a phrase, write a sentence. 22.5 hours. Hours last week if you wanted to. Okay? State your answer. Make sure your answer is reasonable. What if I had gotten, she worked 225 hours? What if I dropped the decimal point? Is that reasonable? No. No, that's not reasonable. Okay, she'd be like, I don't even know if that's possible. How many hours are in a week? Well, seven times 24 hours, 168 hours. That's not even possible right, to work 225 hours a week. So make sure your answer is reasonable. It is in this case. Okay. So Maggie also works at a different place. This is actually a true story. This is Mr. Dulap's daughter's name is Maggie, Maggie Dulap. She graduated last year. Um, she works at Table 6, and she works at 91. Uh, Maggie also earns tips when she works at the restaurant 91. 
In one week at 91, she made $231.40. If she made $58 in tips and worked 17 hours, how much does she make per hour? What is her hourly wage? Let me read that again. It's, it's good to read things twice, maybe three times over. Maggie earns tips when she works at 91. In one week at 91, she made $231.40. She makes 58 bucks in tips and works 17 hours. What's her hourly wage? So let me ask you this. What do I not know? What is my unknown in this problem? What do I what do I need to figure out? Brent, so much to make the note. How much does she make per hour? So let's say W okay, chose blue. W is her hourly wage. Let's say W is her hourly wage. How much she makes per hour? Okay. Well, we know total for the week she made what? 231.4. That's everything. That's tips and hourly wage. Okay, she makes 58 bucks per in tips and then an additional amount that she works per hour or the that she makes per hour. 17 times that hourly wage. There's my equation. $58 plus an additional $17 per hour, or no, that's, I don't know, 17 hours times an, an hourly wage. That's going to be your whole amount. Okay, so let's solve that equation. We subtract 58 to both sides. That's going to get me 17W is equal to we got 231.4 minus 58, and that gives me 173.4. And then I divide by 17. Oops, come on up. Divide by 17. 10.2. Okay, it's not enough to say W is equal to 10.2. Answer the question. What is the true answer to this problem? What is the true answer to the question that we have here? Gio. Maggie uh, makes $10.20 an hour. Good. 91. Good. Maggie makes $10.20 per hour at this restaurant. Whoa. That's my answer. Good. 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 Questions about that? Okay. Let's take a look at the next one. I like this next problem because it kind of plays like, I don't know, I, I did this when I was back last summer. Uh, use a table to find the number of miles you need to bike on Friday so that the mean number of miles biked per day is five. All right, I'm looking to average five miles per day. I'm looking to average biking five miles per day. And I see the table gives me Monday through Thursday. So I haven't biked yet. Maybe it's Thursday evening and I'm deciding how long I want to go on Friday. But I know that I want to average out to be five miles per day. So how do I calculate mean? What does mean mean? Very good. I add up all the, the pieces of data and I divide it by how many there are. So, for example, here, I've got Monday through Thursday. What do I not know? What am I looking to find? What's my unknown in this case? What's my unknown? How many hours you should bike on Friday? Good. So, I'm going to say Friday over here and let's say M. Right? M is going to be the miles on Friday. So I'm kind of finishing my table off with M, my unknown amount, the one, the thing that I'm trying to find. 
Okay, so remember for mean, we just said add up all the numbers and divide by how, how many there are. So I've got 3.5, 5.5, 0. Apparently I was a lazy bum on Wednesday. Thursday's 5. Friday is M. What am I going to divide it by? 5, not 4. Total amount of days is 5 now. And I want it to equal what? Five. I want my average per day to come out to be five. So I have this equation. It really looks kind of you know, a little, little big for me. I don't know. This it seems a little difficult. But honestly, all I can, all I need to do is say three point five plus five point five plus five on the top. Let's add up these like terms. I get fourteen. I multiply by 5 over to the other side. Remember, that's how we solve these types of problems with the fraction bar. So we get 14 plus m is 25. And we subtract the 14 over to the other side. So what's the answer to my problem? What's the answer to the question that was asked of me? The answer to the question. Right, so what's my answer to that? 11. 11 miles need to be biked on Friday. 11 miles on Friday. You could reference the need for it. 11 miles need to be biked on Friday. I'm just going to say 11 miles on Friday. Now, looking at my table, that seems awful high. So maybe my answer is not reasonable. However, I think it is truly reasonable. Because if I want my average to be 5, did I go as many as I needed to go on Monday? No. no. Tuesday, I was just a tiny bit over my average. Wednesday, lazy bum, I need to make up all those miles. And then on Thursday, I just went the, the average that I wanted to go. So I need to be way above five on Friday to make it average out to be five for the week. So it does make sense about 11. Okay, let's take a look here. The perimeter of the Puerto Rican flag is 150 inches. What are the dimensions of the flag? This is usually the case. Most rectangular flags have a ratio to them. What do I mean by that? That means if I have uh, the tall, uh, the, the, not the tall side, but the, um, the short side of the rectangle, the long side of the rectangle is usually one and a half that, that amount. So if it's like a, um, if it's like a 10 foot tall flag, then it's a 15 feet wide flag. It's usually that one to one and a half ratio, like this one. Three over two is one and a half. All right. How do I represent perimeter? What is perimeter? What is perimeter? The distance around the outside. The distance around the outside. Okay. So perimeter, let's start here. Perimeter is two, and if it's a rectangle, two times the length plus two times the width. You could say length plus length plus width plus width if you wanted to, but I'm going to say, since it's a rectangle, two length plus two width. That's our basic perimeter formula. All right, so let's decide what I want my length and my width to be. I'll put my length here and my width here. It doesn't matter. It's all going to average out the same. Uh, if you make the other one width and the other one length, it doesn't matter. Okay, so perimeter is equal to, my length is y, my width is 3 halves y. Now, if I multiply 2 times 3 halves, 2 times 1.5, that's 3. So this perimeter is equal to 2y plus 3y. What is my perimeter? What was my given perimeter? 150. So I can change this into 150 is equal to 2y plus 3y. What is 2y plus 3y? 5y. 5y. So 150 is equal to 5y, and when I divide by 5, I get 30 is equal to y. 
Read the question. What is the question? What's the question? The question is, what are the dimensions of the flag? What are the dimensions? The dimensions imply that you not, in, not only need to tell me length, but you also need to tell me width. Okay. So we can say that one of the dimensions is 30. The flag is 30 inches by, okay, it's 3 halves times y. What would that be? 45. 45. By 45 inches. That's the dimensions of the flag. And all I did there was plug in the 30. Yeah? Nothing. No. You good? Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. I need to write with that. Okay. There you go. All right. Last type of question. Flip it over under the back for me. We never used to do questions like this, but I think that this is really important because the OST loves to give you questions like this because they're going to solve it in a weird way and make you reason it through a way that you probably would have done it on your own. Let me show you what I mean here. Guys, if I asked you to solve this problem, what would you do first? What do you think you would do first? Solve it? You probably would do the distributive property first. So here's what they're going to do. They're going to solve it in a weird way and make you justify each step. Now, to justify each step, it's really kind of getting you ready to do something in geometry called doing proofs in geometry. But basically, it's saying, okay, what, what did you do in that step? What was the change? from one step to the next. Well, looking at there, and you can number the steps if you want to. Let's number this just so we can talk about it a little bit. What's the change from step one to step two? Look at what happened. What is the change? What changed from step one to step two? They added one to both sides. Yes, they added one. They didn't distribute. They added one to both sides. And that's our justification. Add one to both sides. Now, I'm going to drop the to both sides because I would write that every single step. Okay, what changes from step two to step three? Again, your first instinct would probably be to distribute. But did they distribute from step two to step three? No. No. What did they do? What is done from step two to step three? No, they divide. Yeah, it's weird, right? I don't know. I find it weird. They divide. Divide by negative one half. Now, from here on out, it's pretty logical. What's the next step? What did we do from step three to step four? What's done there? Yeah. Good. Add eight. And then the last step, from step four to step five, what's done? Ready? Divide by five. Yeah. But, uh, so they didn't do it right, did they? Did, did we get the right answer? I don't know. We, yeah. Did. Yep. That's not the way that we would have done it, but that's okay. And that's what's going to happen on OST. They're going to say, like, okay, is this a logical, is this possible? Is this the way that it could, did, did we logically reason through the problem? Yeah, that means my answer's got to be correct. Okay. So that's why these. this is going to be um, a little bit weird because it's they're going to show you an example where it's not what you would do, but it's not wrong. Okay, so let's try the other one. Let's try the other one. Now, um, I am going to kind of take steps one, two, and three kind of together. 
Here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. But I'm going to talk about what they're doing. There's four, five, six. Okay, kind of take steps one, two, and three. Like go from step one to step three. What's being done going from step one to step three? Solomon? The distributive property. And really, the distributive property happens from step one to step two. Distributive property, and I'll abbreviate. Distributive property. What actually happens from step two to step three is a step where you simplify. You might see that from time to time, where the justification is that they simplify. Because what really did they do in step two to step three? Well, they actually took two times three and two times x. They just multiplied. So they just simplified the expression. Okay, what is going from step three to step four? They added the various variables. Combined like terms, right? Step four to step five? What's done? Noah? Uh, subtract six. That's a C. Subtract six, and the last one, divide by three. 